Hey guys, happy Sunday. Before we begin, I just wanted to briefly explain what you're about to see. When Ava and I went to Italy this past winter, there was a period when we were able to actually leave Calabria and go visit Rome. First of all, I just wanted to point out that we were following all of the travel restrictions and rules that were in place at the time. While we were there, we recorded the following video, but we couldn't release it because our guest was under a very strict television contract, which prevented him from appearing on Pasta Grammar. Now that's behind us, and seeing as it's Father's Day, it seemed a little bit fitting to finally release it today. So without further ado... Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. As you can probably tell from what's behind us, uh, we are visiting Rome today. Uh, it's my favorite city in the world, and you don't mind it, do you? It's my favorite city too, so I'm so happy. I've been to Rome uh, many times actually, uh, but to be honest, I never paid very much attention to the food, uh, mostly because I was busy looking at stuff like that. So we thought today we would uh, try some classic Roman food here. Ava lived in Rome for what, like eight years? Eight years of my life I spent in this beautiful city. So she's well qualified to uh, show me some Roman food, but we thought we would uh, have someone who's a real expert, a real Roman, take us around today. So uh, you ready to go meet him for coffee? Yeah, sure, let's go. Ciao, Papa! Ciao, ciao, Filio! Ciao, oh, Nora! Guys, if you've seen this video, you uh, sort of met uh, my dad, Max, before. Uh, but here he is in the flesh. Uh, he moved to Rome, what, about a year ago? And uh, he was a recent uh, contestant on MasterChef Italia. It's me. Uh, so if anyone can show us a delicious day in Rome, it's him. Where are we going for coffee? Well, the best place in Rome, I think, is a place called Santa Eustachio, and it's a famous coffee bar, and uh, we're gonna go there. This is a place, Arper, where uh, if you don't want sugar in your coffee, you have to tell before, uh, because uh, they create a sort of special cream made by sugar, and it's all foamy, and it's delicious. I'm not really a sugar in my coffee kind of guy. Trust me. No, you'll like this. I'm ready for some coffee. Mm. That foam is amazing. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, I definitely take back what I said about sugar. That was delicious. I'm getting a little hungry. I feel like I could use, I don't know. A bite to eat? A little bite to eat, yeah. So, let's go, guys. Okay, Nemo. Stop. You know where we are? Uh, Rome? You are standing where Julius Caesar was assassinated. Yeah, so this was where the theater of Pompey was. Right. And sort of the, the nave, I guess you would say, right. came around here. And uh, this is where he died. Okay, now we can go and eat them. Yes, we can go and eat All right. So. Yes, well, more. What we are going to eat right now? Maybe we try one of the most famous types of Roman sandwiches. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think that I know what are you talking about. Okay, Namo. So we're at this place, Erbucato, uh, near Termini Station. And this is a famous place to get a porchetta sandwich. Porchetta is basically where they roast a whole pig 
with a lot of seasonings, rosemary, and then slice it up and you get sandwiches made with it. It's really a specialty from a, a small town outside of Rome called Ariccio. But if you're in Rome, there are a few really good porchetta places that do it in the style of Ariccio. And one of them is this place, Air Bucchetto. So we're gonna go in here and get a porchetta sandwich. Sound good to you? That sounds perfect to me. <laughs> Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Uh, prendiamo tre panini porchetta. The real thing, the porchetta from Ariccia. Buon appetito! Buon appetito, What do you think, Eva? That I missed it so much. Mm, yeah. yeah. It's so good. Mm. This is a sandwich after. That's one of the best sandwiches I've ever had. What I like about this is that it's kind of like barbecue in the sense that a really good barbecue sandwich, it doesn't have a lot of fixings on yeah. it. It's just meat on a mm. bun. You don't need anything more than that with this. Exactly. Grazie mille, è stato un piacere. Grazie a voi. Grazie. 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 I, that is seriously one of the absolute best sandwiches of my life. And there was nothing on it. There was nothing on it. It was just porchetta and bread. Honey and pig. Yep. That's it. delicious. Well, now that we're full of uh, pig and pane, as you say, uh, how about some pasta? Sure, let's get some more pig pasta. <laughs> I'm thinking carbonara. Ooh, sounds good to me. So we're here at Raccioli, a restaurant in central Rome, also a famous bakery around the corner. And we're going to get some carbonara for lunch, uh, a classic Roman dish that they do very well. So we're going to give it a try. And here you are sure that you don't find cream, peas, a mushroom in your carbonara. Bon that is really good. Oh my god. That is the best. And to me what sets it apart, the guanciale, which is the, the pig's cheeks, which are used for the meat. Guanciale you can get everywhere in Italy, but they, they use some particularly flavorful version. It's very strong meat, and they cook it very crispy. It's a crunchy texture. It's crunchy. Yeah. It's full of taste, and you don't need anything else than eggs, pecorino, and guanciale. Guanciale is used in the other classic Roman pasta dishes like amatriciana and gricia. Exactly. Is, is guanciale a uniquely Roman ingredient? No, you can find it everywhere in Italy. It just happens to be used here in these classic dishes. Yeah. Guanciale is very hard to find in America, outside of like New York or Boston. So my question is, where do the, where do the pig's cheeks go in America? Every pig has two cheeks. Why is it so hard to find pig's cheeks in America? So you're like famous here, huh? No, that's why I wear a mask. No one recognizes me, as you could tell. Yes, but I'm still up. Okay, in that case, I've got one more classic Roman dish we can try. So, we are here in the Jewish ghetto. Uh, during World War II, the Jews in this neighborhood were all shipped off to Auschwitz, and most of them never returned. And you can see on the street here, uh, brass, plaques which have the names of Jews from this neighborhood who disappeared during the war. 
And uh, this is also the best place uh, where in Rome you can get one of the most traditional uh, Roman food, that is uh, carciofo alla Giudia. So the ghetto here in Rome is famous for, as Ava mentioned, the Jewish style artichokes, which are deep fried and they're delicious. But we are also going to try the Roman style artichoke, which is kind of like cooked and like steamed right with olive yes. oil and parsley and garlic and garlic it's a very different style um, those are the two ways you basically can eat artichokes in rome roman style or jewish style so we're going to eat both Grazie. these are the uh, roman style artichokes and these are the jewish style artichokes which as you can see are deep fried and are beautiful they really look like flowers. All right, guys, should we try the Romano first? Buon, buon appetito. appetito. Mm. Artichokes are like so underused in the US, uh, but right. they're, they're really, really good. Well, part of it is they're, they're expensive in the US. An artichoke costs, what? Two, two and a half, three or more dollars each. In Rome, they're just everywhere. How much do they even cost? Usually in Italy they cost like uh, 50 cents uh, per herjok. So mm -hmm. it's something that you can easily buy mm -hmm. and eat. It's not gourmet food. It's normal people food. Tastes gourmet. Mm -hmm. They're incredibly soft. You can see just how the knife just, it's like butter. <laughs> it's really amazing. Okay guys, should we try the deep fried cousin. Buon appetito. Mm. Okay, I'm declaring a winner right now. Yeah. No, the Jewish style is my favorite. We are very, very lucky. It's pretty cool too because, like, there isn't a lot to either of these dishes. It's basically just artichoke, but cooked in two different ways, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a completely different dish. Yep. I think I have a new favorite vegetable. Move over, eggplants. Well, Dad, thank you for treating us to a delicious day in Rome. My pleasure. We could do this every day, <laughs> and I do. I'd hate to leave our viewers uh, out of the experience though. So what do you guys think if we go back to your kitchen and try to replicate one of these uh, recipes from today? As we say in Rome, namo. Namo. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Pastagrammer, and we'll see you next time. Ciao! Ciao, Michi.